Let's look into the chemical changes that affected the Statue of Liberty. We all know that the Statue of Liberty has a copper skin. Here is a photograph of the Statue of Liberty from 1886. As you can see, the statue has a bright coppery color. Here is a photograph of the Statue of Liberty as it is today. As you can see, it has a greenish blue color. Now let's look at the chemical changes that caused the statue to turn green. First, the copper reacts with the oxygen in the air to form copper monoxide. This copper monoxide further gets oxidized to form copper 2 oxide. Copper 1 oxide is kind of like a reddish color and copper 2 oxide has a blackish color. The copper 2 oxide further reacts with the carbon dioxide and moisture in the air to form different compounds of copper carbonate and copper hydroxide. These copper carbonate and copper hydroxide compounds are bluish green in color. Since coal was the major fuel source for the American industry in the 19th and early 20th century, there are sulfur compounds in the air. So the copper 2 oxide also reacts with the sulfur compounds in the air and moisture to form a combination of copper sulfate and copper hydroxide, which is kind of greenish in color. The mixture of these three compounds gives rise to the bluish green patina which gives the statue its bluish green color. The patina is only about a hundredth of an inch of the thickness of the copper skin. In addition to enhancing the beauty of the statue, the patina also acts as a protective covering for the statue. As seen in this picture, the Statue of Liberty has an outer copper skin, which is only the thickness of two copper pennies, and inside it has an iron armature, which basically functions like a skeleton holding the statue up. In the original design, the iron internal support structure and the copper skin were separated by a shellac insulation. But the insulation degraded over a period of time and the acidic rainwater got into the statue through the statue's torch. The old torch had glass all around and was powered from within. Moisture seeped through the torch, which acted as an electrolyte between the iron armature and the copper skin, enabling the gradual corrosion of the more active iron. This threatened the strength of the structure. This electrochemical reaction is called galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion occurs when two dissimilar metals come into contact through an electrolyte that speeds up the degradation of the more active metal. In this galvanic corrosion between iron and copper, iron being the more active metal acts as the anode and loses its electrons and copper acts as the cathode or the negative electrode. So therefore, iron undergoes severe corrosion. The statue underwent major restoration from 1984 to 1986. The torch was redesigned with copper flames and gold leaf covering that would reflect the outside light. The shellac insulation was replaced by a PTFE insulation and the iron armature was replaced by stainless steel. Now the Statue of Liberty which symbolizes freedom from tyranny and oppression is stronger than ever.